Folks, I'm going to show you today a frame from a company called Skull and Drones, like Skull and Bones, get it? And uh, this is this company's first frame, as far as I can tell, and it is a, a, tr a similar to the uh, the blackout style frames that we've all seen. And frankly, frames of this style are in some senses a dime a dozen. A lot of people, they go, they get Google SketchUp, they sketch up frame, and oh, now look, they're a frame designer. But I feel like this frame really rises above other s sort of superficially similar designs with a few design features that really make it stand out and that made me want to show it to you. Uh, one of the thing is that if we look at the plates here, it really is a, a nice looking frame. It's got the lightning cutouts here, but they're not you know, just sort of cut out in sort of rubber stamp fashion, cookie cutter fashion. They're really sort of uh, varied and organic and give the frame a unique look, uh, not just as uh, sort of repetitive. But at no time does it appear that the cutouts have been made in such a way as to su substantially weaken the frame. So I really hate it when people make a frame and then they do something to make the frame look cool, but that makes the frame worse in some way, that makes it more likely to break or less functional in some way. And it seems like this designer has really struck a good balance between making it aesthetically pleasing but not compromising the things that you really need from your frame. Another thing that really caught my eye about this frame is that if we look at the diagram here, it's got this nice vertical plate here in the back which gives you a little more room in the back to mount, for example, your video transmitter and your receiver. But instead of mounting them like one on the top plate and one on the bottom plate, you can kind of put them sideways and they'll just stay there in one modular unit if, for example, you have to take the top plate off. To, uh, to, to do maintenance. So in theory, it seems like you could have all of your gear mounted to the bottom plate, allowing you to easily take the top plate off without it being encumbered by wires or antennas or anything like that. And I think that's a really clever little touch. This is not, by the way, the first frame I've ever seen with this touch, but it's been integrated in a very cool way. The overall design of the frame is really, uh, really good. And that's why I'm showing it to you today. The designer of the frame would probably uh, be upset if I didn't mention that this arm design has had all kinds of like stress analysis, CAD simulated heat maps done on it. And if you go to the Skull and, and Drones website, you can see the images. And uh, I don't know anything about that, but it, they look cool. And supposedly this has had some advanced stuff done to show that this is a super, super strong arm design. When we start crashing it into concrete, we'll find out if that's true. But I do want to mention that uh, this arm design is not just somebody went to, with a pen and SketchUp and went, oh, I see, I'll put a slit here. It seems like a good idea. At least that's what the website says. So let's start putting it together. And we'll start with the bottom plate and we'll get the hardware out here. And the hardware comes in either this kind of gold, this burnished gold color or this lighter sort of yellow color. I believe I've been sent two sets of hardware so I can have my pick of color. And I think I'm gonna go with this cool gold color because it's a little more, I don't know, this orangey gold just really appeals to me. And if we take the pieces out, you can see that the pieces are individually wrapped. A very nice touch that helps you. Have, a lot of times you get the hardware for one of these and it's all just in one great big bag and then you have to spend a lot of time sorting it you know, 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, etc. This is all individually wrapped, a very nice touch. And we've got 10 millimeter M3 screws. I'm gonna guess that that's these, and these are for the top plate. Notice that we spec'd 10 millimeter screws for the top plate. A lot of times you'll see frames with something like six millimeter screws, uh, shorter screws, and uh, you know, there's an argument there to be made about weight versus, uh, versus strength. But uh, th this designer has decided to go a little more for strength and a little less for weight savings. And then we've got uh, 12 millimeter screws here. And there should be a 14 millimeter screw somewhere as well. Yeah, here's the 14 millimeter screws for the flight controller stack. I'll set those aside right now because I'm not going to put a flight controller in here at this exact moment. The arms go on top of the bottom plate. So I'm gonna start by putting the arms on. I see. We've got two screws here for the arms and 
then this plate is going to go on top this right here I've clearly not got that right there we go there we go can't do it wrong and then nuts are going to go on top now I lock nuts here very nice touch no this is really clearly a lot of attention to detail has been paid here and no, no expense has been spared like they could have saved a few cents by giving you cheaper nuts but no these are these are nice nylock nuts very nice touch and uh, you can be assured that they're not going to back out on you excellent okay so I've actually messed this up the arm doesn't go like that I believe it goes like that yes so it lines up here and again gosh look how nicely that lines up there with the edge of the frame do you see how that sort of just fits flush what a nice touch a lot of attention has clearly been paid to uh to aesthetics here but not to the detriment and it's little details it's little details that stand out and not but not to the detriment i think I mean, obviously, we don't know till we crash it, but not obviously to the detriment of strength. And there you go. They fit together. And you can see. And you can see if we look right here, just look at how these curves come together. You have a nice, graceful curve here. Very pleasant. And then you have a nice curve here. And I know I sound like an art curator. But she's pointing this stuff out to you. Look how right here. Do you see how this cutout here matches right here? And just so that's not an accident. That didn't happen by accident. This guy did this on purpose, and it, it just looks kind of reminds me of a like a sea turtle. Does that remind you of a sea turtle? Do you see like the turtle's back here and the legs sticking out? And I don't know. It just has this, <laughs> I'm kind of gushing here a little bit. I feel a little silly. It has this kind of organic feel. And it's very sort of balanced and I just really, I really like it. <laughs> so see, I'm about to do this wrong. Do you see that it doesn't, right here, it doesn't fit flush. And this, it's not, the angle isn't right here. You see, but if I flip it over, that's correct. Yes, okay, good. Here we go. We can tighten that down, but I'm not going to just yet, just as I, things come together. Got a nice little uh, enclosure here for your, for your flight controller. I am curious how much that will get in the way Quite often there are wires from the ESCs that are coming in from here and they go underneath the PDB, for example. And um, it does seem like you're going to have a hard time doing that with this frame. They're not going to come in flat, but they're going to have to go over. And then if your flight control, if your uh, PDB is, is not too far raised up. So in th what I'll often do is I'll just get like two M3 washers. And I'll have this maybe a millimeter off the deck, right? And you can see that if it was sunk down in there, I mean, it's not a millimeter off the deck now, it's flush, but you, would, you wouldn't really be able to run wires up underneath. You would need to bring them in the top. And, uh, and in some cases, that's going to make a difference. Maybe in other cases, it won't. But uh, I'll often leave myself just like a millimeter and a half, maybe of height. Some wires will go underneath and then the, uh, the ESD wires might go underneath, and then the uh, there's uh, the motor wires go above the top, and I find that helps keep things pretty clean. That's really not going to work here, I suppose. I mean, you could bring them in and down and around, but it's going to have some kinks and stuff, and just not be optimal, I think. So they give you these six millimeter spacers, and the their intent is that the screw will come up from the bottom, and then the spacer will go on and then your flight controller or your PDB will go on. So these spacers are included to raise the PDB or the flight controller up enough to give you clearance past this lip. So that's fine I guess. Shiny. <laughs> they do look as shiny here. Well maybe not quite as shiny but they look pretty shiny here. This uh, this gold color is 
That's <laughs> so flash. It's so silly. But it's kind of fun. I see. Oh, isn't that clever? So we've got these holes here for the flight controller, but where are the other standoffs? One of the standoffs goes in the middle. <laughs> Standoff in the middle, huh? How about that? And this one's going to go here, and that's not really a screw hole per se, is it? It's uh, interesting. These are the camera plates. This is the back plate. It's a little unclear which way that goes. Oh, I see. No, see? See, now look. This is great. And I wasn't sure which way this one goes in. Do you see that this tab is larger than this tab? And the cutouts match? So that you can't put it in backwards, and there's no ambiguity about which way it's supposed to go in. And that is the shit that really makes my little heart go pitter-patter. That's good design right there. I'm very happy with that. We've got uh, 3D milling here on the camera holder. And there's a cutout here if you've got a camera that has that extra screw to hold the angle. Like the 1177 just has one screw here, but I guess the um, the Swift maybe, the Runcam Swift, has another screw to hold the angle. And then this will go on the top, of course. And there you go. It's built. What do you think of that? I think that's a pretty good looking copter. It's it's different, and but not in a bad way. <laughs> and it really stands out. And not just because it has gold hardware. It's simple. But it's not simple in a sort of a reductionist way. And it's got enough, like, if you compare this, compare this to the Hibernogen frame that I showed you. It was sort of a minimalist frame, and it was kind of nothing to it. It didn't really make an impression, to, on, on me at least. It was just like, well, there it is. That's all That's all there is to it. I guess you got two plates of carbon and some standoffs. And this has, this is functional. Like, this plate here, that's no different in many ways, that's no different than, like, the alien sandwich plate in that it holds the arms on, right? But it's different because it's a ring, and it creates this little area here that, I don't know, it just gives your eye something to see. And I, I, This guy is a really good designer in, in a lot of ways. You may you may like or dislike the frame, but I, you know, if, you were to set, if I was to set out some, to make something like this, it wouldn't have all these little details. I would just be like, plate, plate, standoff, done. And, and and that's not what we got here. So, well, I think this, this is a heck of a frame. I do notice the camera plates here. I You know, the QAVR, for example, has uh, standoffs here and then standoffs right behind the camera plates. And that seems to me like it really boxes in and strengthens the front end. Now, here we got a triangle, which is going to have slightly less resistance to, to racking than, than, like, the boxed-in one. Uh, it, but it's probably all right. This this plate here, in addition to giving you a place to mount your maybe your video transmitter or your receiver, is adding additional strength against forces like pushing like this, trying to sort of skew it this way. And that's nice because a lot of uh, copters don't really have anything much keeping them from doing that. Here we've got the camera plates, which will help with that a little bit. But because they're not sandwiched by standoffs, I think not too much. But this setup here with the standoff right in front of this vertical plate it's going to really help against forces pushing on the copter like that, you see. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I I would be excited to build this out. I think it's going to fly fine. Um, you know, I don't think there's a huge amount of, of difference in how a lot of these H-frame copters fly. I think there's more difference in how they, they crash. <laughs> and we'll, we'll certainly see about that. But uh, there you go. That is the Skull and Drones frame. And uh, thanks for watching. Happy flying.